the Springfield Armory operator. Let's check it out. The 1911 was designed as a combat handgun. It was designed to be in the middle of the fight. And just right before World War I, served the US military to World War II, Korea, Vietnam, and even throughout the Desert Storm and a lot of other applications. Also used in a lot of police agencies, especially in 45 ACP. And that was the caliber that it was designed around. It's a very effective man stopper. It is a combat handgun, but since that time, there have been a lot of different iterations of the 1911. A lot of competitive shooters really like it, um, you know, and then guys that just like to get out and plink, and plus just the mystique around the 1911. I mean, for 110 years, this gun is just as popular today as it ever has been. Springfield Armory makes some really quality 1911s, and they have a nice line of different styles, different calibers, but this is the operator and it is in 45 ACP. Uh, this is a defensive handgun. It was made as a weapon to be able to be used for military, police, or for civilians that want to defend themselves. It's an all steel frame pistol, and it has a lot of upgrades over the original 1911. And we really appreciate Springfield Armory for sending the 1911 operator for this review. Springfield Armory has been making 1911s for decades. Uh, started in 1974, and they do produce 1911s. They also produce the M1A rifle and Garands. So there's a long track record with Springfield Armory, going down from their just basic model all the way up to something like this, or even their TRP models, which are actually used by the FBI, uh, the same type model. And this, honestly, has a lot of the same features that the TPR has, and yet it has an accessory rail, which the TPR does not. And yet it comes in about $350 less MSRP. So I think that this is really a full-on tactical self-defense pistol with a lot of features, really at a reasonable price. Now there is the TRP operator model, and it does have the Picatinny rail section, and then it also has a Picatinny rail section that goes all the way out. And so that is part of the TRP series. But again, it's considerably more expensive than the operator. But the 1911 has come a long way. <laughs> I mean, since 1911. In fact, we have a Series 70 Colt right here. Uh, it has the hot salt bluing, beautiful finish. But, you know, it doesn't have a beaver tail. The sights are really low. It has just a standard tang hammer. Uh, there's a lot of things about this pistol that are upgraded with your new Springfield Armory. And a lot of other companies have really upped the 1911 game. So while this was a great combat pistol in its day, uh, there are some advantages to the Springfield Armory operator that can go above. And a lot of that has to do with just actual field experience or combat experience. Let's go ahead and check to make sure the gun's unloaded. We're gonna drop our eight round magazine and the chamber is empty. Now these are made by Metgar, and you do get two magazines. Uh, so it's nice to have that really nice bluing on it. It's gonna make it really slick. And Metgar makes magazines for a lot of different gun companies because they're just so reliable. We have a flared magwell, which is gonna allow those magazines to go in a little bit easier. 
Uh, a lot of times they will have the extended flare, which I really don't care for because it just adds more mass to the pistol. Ambidextrous safeties on either side, and they are extended. We have G10 grips, and these OD color, and it's very aggressive texturing on here with a little thumb notch right here for right-handed shooters, but then on the other side, it doesn't have it. Uh, the beaver tail is really nice. It's a high-ride beaver tail with a memory notch, and so it just allows you to get that really tight into the handgun. And we have a skeletonized hammer. And so, again, with the Tang hammer, you could get a little bit of a slide bite, especially with the little grip safety nub that they had before, um, and it just kind of streamlines your hammer. Faster lockup, and that's one of the big reasons for the skeletonized hammer. The gun itself is a forged slide and forged frame, uh, and there are a lot of 1911s out there that are cast, and so that is really a big plus for the Springfield Armory line. Uh, we do have the Picatinny rail on the front here, and uh, that allows for lights and lasers, which has not been something traditional for your 1911. Also, we have front cocking serrations, and of course, obviously, rear cocking serrations. They're pretty widely spaced, which makes it really nice to be able to grab it and to bring it back. Uh, now, I removed the magazine because one of the things about it is if you pull it back and it goes into slide lock, this slide stop is a slide stop. I mean, it's, it is very difficult to push down on an empty magazine. Uh, if you have a loaded magazine, it goes in really simple. So we're going to go ahead and drop the magazine and release that slide. Uh, it does have a black Cerakote finish, and so it's going to have that more of a matte finish, but yet it's going to be really durable. And that, I like that better than parkerized finishes, which seem to wear uh, over time. You have your magazine release right here, and it does jettison those magazines right out. Skeletonized trigger. It does have a small little set screw in here, so you can set up your over travel. Now the sights are three dot. Uh, the front is a tritium bead, and so it gives you that glow at the front. You just have the white dots at the back. It is serrated, so it cuts down on glare and it is a tactical rear sight. This is made for one-handed reloads. And guys, in studies with shootings, 80% of shootings are in the extremities, gunshot wounds. And so the chances of you getting shot in the arm, uh, you know, are pretty high in a gunfight. And so this allows you to go ahead and load and rack the slide off your belt, off a boot, or off a table. And I really like this feature on my handguns. The mainspring housing has some really nice texturing on it. Uh, the front strap does not. Uh, the TRP does have a texturing on the front, and, but a, a lot of people like it, a lot of people don't. And so it's just really you know, a matter of preference. But it does give you a little bit better grip on the pistol. With the G10 grips and this mainspring housing at the back, you have a really solid grip on the pistol. The barrel's a match grade forged stainless steel barrel and it is five inches in length, which is your standard government size. Uh, the barrel bushing is also stainless and it's fitted to the barrel to give you really good accuracy. The one thing about this 1911 is it's made to be a self-defense combat tactical type firearm. And all the features on here are just really suited well for that application. I mean, everything is in line. I mean, it's really a tight frame to slide fit. Uh, one thing about the TRP is that they do hand select the slides in the frames to make them really fit well. But guys, I'm telling you, this is a really nice fit. And guys, it's all steel, so it's really hefty. But that's gonna give you extended service life. Uh, when you have an aluminum alloy frame, uh, they tend to wear over time, especially if you're putting a lot of rounds through it. But really to get a good idea of the upgrades, I just wanted to kind of set these side by side. Uh, there is a smooth front strap on the government model. And this one actually has a Packmire mainspring housing, which is that rubberized finish on it. Got the wood grips. They're smooth. You can get a ton of different grips. In fact, you can change these grips out if you want. Just a combat trigger, nothing special. Uh, one thing about this is you can adjust again, the over travel. No Picatinny rail. And really, a lot of 1911s are still made with no Picatinny rail. And, but that's really great if you want to put on lights, lasers, or the combination of both. And it fits on here very well. And because the rails are more toward the back of the frame, 
you know, the light doesn't stick out too far. Really, light has become a very important part of self-defense, especially at night. And so having a light on your firearm, to me, you know, is a great option. But yet, I do like to have a flashlight to identify first before I point a loaded gun at someone. Now here you can see that the barrel bushing is a little bit enlarged compared to the original barrel bushing. Uh, we do still have the texturing here at the front. And again, these sights uh, on the government model, I mean, they are low profile. Uh, this just gives you a little bit better sight picture. Plus, with the tritium bead, that's definitely an advantage. And they are dovetailed in. And if you've ever changed the front sight on a standard 1911, it's just staked in the front of the slide. And if you don't do it right, those can come flying off. You can also see that the ejection port has been flared, which most of your modern 1911s have that. But that just allows you to fire more of your hollow points, uh, which traditionally with the 1911, that has been an issue. Also, you can see that the serrations are much deeper and more wide, a lot easier to grab than the traditional 1911 serrations. And you have front serrations on the operator, which you have no serrations on the standard Colt government. Grip safety is a huge plus. Uh, this really allows you to get your hand up uh, with the small little tang grip safety. It doesn't give you a lot to grip hold of. Uh, so this is much more comfortable to shoot with the beaver tail. And again, it gets your hand up higher onto the frame. And of course, the Tang Hammer versus the Skeletonized Hammer. Guys, I love that traditional 1911, just like this Series 70. But this is going to give you upgrades to bring it up to the 21st century. But that doesn't mean I still don't love taking out my old 1911. This is just a lot more pleasurable to shoot. Weight on the Springfield Armory Operator. 2 pounds, 9.4 ounces. It's got some heft. Weight on the standard Colt government, two pounds, six ounces. Now this is a single action semi-automatic pistol. And that means that the trigger does not actuate the hammer unless it's cocked and then it just releases the hammer. And so we've got to load around, you rack the slide, it brings the hammer in the rear position and then all the subsequent shots fire one after the other until the magazine is empty. With double action, when you pull the trigger, it actually pulls the hammer back. But the one thing about a single action pistol is that every time you pull the trigger, it is very consistent from the first pull to the last pull. And that's a real big plus for the 1911. And guys, if you have it cocked, you have to depress the grip safety to be able to pull the trigger. So here I'm gonna pull the trigger, there's no action. Once I engage the grip safety, then it'll fire. And that's something that the US military required when they first adopted the 1911. They wanted a grip safety. Uh, and it's retained in all the 1911s since that time. But that makes this a very safe pistol to carry. Uh, one thing about it is when you pull the hammer back and you engage your safeties, you can carry it just like this, in which I recommend cocked and locked. All you have to do is disengage your safety and you're ready to fire. But you still have to have a full grip on that grip safety or it won't fire. And so that gives you again added protection. So if you're putting this in a holster and you just take it and grab the grip and don't depress the grip safety, you can slide it in and it again makes it extremely safe. Now one thing that 1911s are known for is their trigger pull, an excellent trigger pull. And so we're gonna test this out. I've got it cocked, it is unloaded. So we have just a little bit of take up right here, hit a wall, Man, it is a crisp break. Go ahead and bring back, check reset, right there. Man, it barely moves, and there it is back again. And let's check our trigger pull weight with our Lyman trigger gauge from Brownells. I have to depress the grip safety. Four pounds, 10 ounces. Four pounds, 5.1 ounces. I mean, it is really nice. And yet it's not a hair trigger, but man, right at about four and a half pounds, that is excellent. Now you'll notice there is muzzle flip with the 45 ACP, but with the operator, when you fire the pistol, it comes right back down to the front sight. And so you get the recoil and then it goes and it tracks right back to that front sight, which makes it really easy to get follow-up shots very rapidly. We appreciate Fioki for sponsoring the ammo, all made right here in the USA one of the largest suppliers of ammunition in the country.
Now when you take a 1911 out to the range, especially an all steel frame, five inch barrel, uh, government size 1911, I mean it's heavy, it has a lot of heft to it, but that helps mitigate a lot of the recoil. The 45 caliber is coming out really strong and it's a heavy bullet. I mean, up to 230 grains and you can bring that down to a lot of self-defense loads, jacketed hollow points. But that 45 caliber bullet is large and it's in charge. I mean, it is a great round for self-defense even with ball ammunition. In fact, there's an old saying with the military, they all fall to ball. And that makes this a perfect caliber for the operator. I mean, this is really made for, as a defensive gun and so it really lends itself with all those different features. Now, it shoots like a 1911. Uh, it has the nice beaver tail that's really high ride, so it really allows you to get a very high grip on the pistol. And the G10 scales work very well. I mean, you can hold on to it, you know you've got a good grip on the firearm. But what really separates it are the external features, the upgrades. The Picatinny rail on the bottom, I mean, it allows for lights, lasers, or a combo of both. Uh, the sights, I really like that rear cocking shelf on the back sight. It allows you to manipulate the firearm and reload it with one hand. You can use it on your belt or on your boot. And the front sight is tritium, so it gives you night fighting capability. And then of course with the front slide serrations, I mean it just allows you to press check, it allows you just to cock the pistol. It gives you a few more advantages if you're ever in a self-defense situation. It was very reliable. We had no malfunctions. Uh, we did have a couple of times where the slide didn't hold back on the last round. Once I looked at it, it was an older mag that I was using, a Metgar mag, but it was not the ones that were sent with the Springfield operator. But the one thing about 1911s are they're very pointable, they're very balanced, and they're thin. So it just you just lead that sight to wherever you're gonna shoot and it just gets right on target. I grew up shooting 1911s in 45 and used to do a lot of competitive shooting with IPSIG and IDPA. And the 45 is just like coming home for me. Yes, it has a little more recoil than your 9mm, but it's more of a shove than that push from the 9mm. It's more recoil but you know that you have 230 grains coming out the end of that barrel compared to 115 grains or even up to 147 grain. And then with that barrel lock up, the accuracy was really good and I expected that. Now as far as disassembly, we've already got our magazine removed. We'll make sure the gun is unloaded. Uh, first thing you want to do is to bring down your little recoil spring plug. It's under spring tension, and then we just bring our barrel bushing around to the nine o'clock position. This releases your recoil spring plug. Again, it is under tension, so be careful. I just go ahead and remove my plug. Then I take my barrel bushing and I turn it back to about the four o'clock position. And that sets it up with the grooves in the slide to be able to slide this right out. And here you can see this little nub, it fits on the inside of the slide and it allows it to turn. Next, we're gonna take back our slide to this little first notch. And once we get it lined up with the slide stop, you can just push out your slide stop. Take it out and then let the slide just go forward. Again, you don't have to pull the trigger. Uh, and then we pull out our recoil spring and our recoil guide rod. And this is the old GI style. Uh, there are a lot that are captured guide rods. They're a little bit more difficult to disassemble. And then we take our link on our barrel, drop it down, and then pull the barrel straight out of the front of the slide, just like that. And that's all you need to do to field strip. But let's take a look. The machining on this pistol is just impeccable. Uh, they've really done a great job, and that's typically what Springfield Armory does. Then here on the slide, on the inside, again, very well finished inside and out. And that's really the hallmark of just really good guns craft. The barrel is a stainless steel match grade barrel. It is forged to give it extra life and you have your barrel link and this is definitely a John Browning design. A little bit of scuffs here from shooting yesterday. I mean, we shot a lot through this pistol. Now for reassembly in reverse order, uh, just bring down our link, go ahead and put it into the slide, lock it down. Go ahead and take your recoil spring, 
Now on the recoil guide rod, there's a little bit of an eclipse right here and you just put that against your barrel. Then we're going to bring our link up just a touch. Next, we're going to go ahead and put it back over the frame. And sometimes that lock up, there we go. You just have to get past it. Now make sure that your barrel is in the correct position and your barrel link is in this hole. So when you put in your slide stop, it goes right in there. And then I check it with the barrel to make sure that it's tight. And then as we bring it up, there's a little detent right here on this tube. You want to make sure you don't scratch your frame. So you want to kind of push against the detent like that. And then it goes straight in. Next, we just go ahead and push our slide forward. Now take your barrel bushing again at about that four o'clock position and then we're going to turn it and we're going to go back to the nine o'clock position take your recoil spring plug and compress it and then bring around your barrel bushing just like that uh, there are tools to be able to turn that barrel bushing but this one was simple enough to do it and test for function and we're back in business guys pros and cons of the operator. Uh, there's a lot of great features. The addition of the Picatinny rail is going to give you light options. The front cocking serrations, high ride beaver tail is really nice and the sights to me are a big plus. G10 grips are definitely also a plus. I mean the things they've added on here really add up to making this more combat ready. Uh, the negative side, you know, it's eight rounds and so you're going to be limited to eight uh, also, it's an all steel frame, so it's pretty heavy, but that does mitigate some of the recoil. So it's a 1911, and you know, if that's what you want to carry, the single action tradition uh, with all that's gone behind the 1911 has been a proven design. You know, there are a lot of striker fire polymer frame pistols out there, or even double single action, and really it's just a matter of choice. But uh, there's just something about the 1911 that I love. And honestly, again, I cut my teeth on the 1911. So when I get a hold of one, it's like coming home. But as far as this being a choice for your self-defense option, that's for you to decide. Now, Springfield Armory makes an array of different models of 1911s with a lot of different features and upgrades, and they have their base model as well. Uh, but this is really, again, designed around self-defense. It's a tactical combat 1911, and in that original 45. With a lot of the features that it has on it, it really suits that role, whatever environment you're in. And then if you just want to go out and shoot, it's great for that as well. Now the retail price is $1,099, and of course market price is typically less. And you can go to your local gun shop and find out. But again, we really appreciate Springfield Armory for sending the Operator 1911 for this review. guys. Putting a 1911 in your hand brings you back from 1911 till 2021 and beyond. And again, it's just as popular today as it ever has been. Yes, it's old school and it's that original design, but yet again, it's just iconic. Guys, check out Sportsman's Guide for all kind of accessories, shooting, hunting, camping, military surplus from all over the world. Uh, it's one of my go-to sources, and you get $20 off for every $100 or more purchase using SOOCH, S-O-O-T-C-H, in the coupon code. And if you're a member of their Buyers Club, you get free shipping. And that really comes in handy when you're ordering jerry cans. <laughs> so check out Sportsman's Guide. Great resource. Be strong. Be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic. They've been making okay and you do get and it does have a small little area and it does have a small little set screw where you can set your trigger pull weight
where you can set your and it does have a small little okay, it does have a small little uh, your grip safety if your barrel is doing that <laughs> if your barrel's doing that you don't have it right okay <laughs> good gosh okay um, and so it's just okay let's start over we're going to start over this is the operator there we go now you may have to drop it down oh, okay dadgummit <laughs> i've done this a million times and here i go screwing it up boy screwing it up <laughs> 